Carving this bracing is the most crucial step in building a CF Martin & Company acoustic guitar. But you won't even see it on the finished product. This X-shaped pattern of wood under the hood is what gives Martin guitars their signature sound. It'll cost you at least $2,800 for Martin's most iconic American-made model, the D28. But that's nothing compared to the priciest guitar Martin sells, a limited edition Dreadnought that goes for $125,000. And on the secondary market, the instruments sell for even more. Some of the oldest in Martin's collection are estimated to be worth nearly half a million dollars. This is our pre-war D45. This guitar sold for around $240 when it was new, and now it's worth six figures, well into six figures. And while its reputation among celebrities contributes to the brand's popularity, musicians say there's a one-of-a-kind sound a Martin acoustic guitar makes. So what exactly makes these guitars sound different? And is that why they're so expensive? My goal is to make a million dollar Martin. Haven't done it yet. Chris Martin IV is the sixth generation of his family to run the company. His namesake, Christian Frederick Martin, founded the company in 1833. I work at a company that makes the best of its kind. I work at a company that makes the real thing. We're not making a commodity. We're not making a copy of a Martin guitar. We're still making the original Martin guitar. Martin employs about 1,100 people across its two factories in Nazareth, Pennsylvania and Navajoa, Mexico. The craftspeople in Nazareth work on the high-end models and custom designs. It all starts with selecting the right wood. Guitars and other instruments use what are called tone woods. These have special properties that vibrate and transmit the ideal sound for musical instruments. Typically, spruce is used for the tops and bottoms, rosewood for the sides, and maple or mahogany for the neck. But Martin uses a wide variety of woods for its instruments. These tone woods are responsible for the clear, bell-like tone that musicians like Craig Thatcher say is a key difference in Martin's acoustic guitars. Every guitar has their own voice, particularly acoustic guitars. And there is a Martin tone, a Martin voice, that you can distinguish when they're hearing it on the radio, hearing on records, hearing it being played on movie soundtracks. The Martin guitar really stands out, that tone. It's a full and rich, vibrant sound with deep and full basses, a really great mid-range, nice high end that cuts through. The tops and bottoms are not one piece, but actually a panel that has been carefully sliced in half and opened like a book, then glued together at the edges. This book matching helps create a perfectly symmetrical pattern. These pieces are then checked for quality in a process known as candling. Candling is a light that shines through the wood and back in the old days they used to use a regular candle and do it like that, but now they upgraded it, thank God. <laughs> Dee has been with Martin for 21 years and she has spent the last nine working in the candling department looking for any imperfections before they progress any further down the assembly line. What we do is we grade the wood, it goes from two to eight, and then what we do is we candle to look for any sap pockets or pitch pockets or knots or anything like that. Like Dee, many of the workers in Martin's factory have been with the company for a long time. Rodney Tashner, who currently runs the laser cutter, has been working the line for 33 years. We are running a 400 watt laser machine here, cut out all the tops, sides, backs, most of all, pretty much all flat stock that's run on here. The next step is the most crucial to Martin's signature sound, the bracing. Bracing refers to a hidden pattern of wood glued under the top of the guitar for structural support. All acoustic guitars require bracing, but designing effective bracing is complicated. 
Because the guitar's top is the most important factor of its sound, it's crucial to not burden it with too much wood. One of the things when you're looking at an acoustic guitar, you want it to be structurally sound, but you also want it to sound good. Because if we brace this too heavy, you know, the top's not gonna vibrate freely. And if we don't brace the top strong enough, it could just implode on itself. In the 1840s, Christian Frederick Martin invented this X pattern, which provides plenty of structural integrity without sacrificing tone. The design was so successful that almost all steel string acoustic guitars made today use the pattern. And you know, what's that old saying? If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, we are very flattered because we are very imitated. A craftsperson will glue the pieces onto the surface with fish glue and use this machine to hold everything in place while it dries. These thin pieces of wood are positioned and then carved into the right shape based on each guitar model. After I take the guitar, I'll shape down all the braces to a certain size and sand them down and round them out. Uh, every model has its own particular needs. They're all very different and we do have to memorize quite a bit of them. There's about like 50 different patterns that I have to memorize. Um, it, I started back in September and it took me about four months, five months before I could really start doing these myself. Uh, there is a lot of training that goes into it. The sides of the guitar are separate pieces of rosewood, which are steam pressed into this curved shape and glued together to form the rim. A perforated ribbon of Spanish cedar is attached around the edges for additional support using clothespins. The ribbon adds surface area that will assist with attaching the top and bottom. As much as we do on the outside, we try to clean up all the glue inside and make sure all of the ribbons where it should be and you know braces are fit nice and snug in their pockets. Aluminium casting is used to attach the top and bottom to the rim and hold everything together while it dries. Next, either this machine or a craftsperson cuts a channel around the edge of the guitar, a process called freezing, to make space for the binding strip. The body is sanded and sprayed with fillers, sealers, toners and stains to protect the wood and it's left to hang dry in a curing room at a high temperature until the finishing has hardened. Though many steps of the process are still done by hand, Martin has started to incorporate robotics into its assembly line, some of which were built and designed in-house in its machining department. This giant robotic arm, for example, suctions onto the wood and is programmed to buff each body at very specific pressures. The necks of the guitars go through their own parallel production process. First, they're cut separately into identical base pieces. Then, they're sanded down into shape by hand. Each model requires a different neck shape, so craftspeople use these metal gauges to keep all the shapes consistent. Then, the fingerboard, frets and nut are added at stations down the line. But before a guitar can be glued together, a technician will perform a pre-fit to ensure everything aligns perfectly. Steve Miller has worked for Martin for 26 years, and for him, it's a family tradition. Yeah, we have a lot of family. My, I could sit here and go, my uncle, my aunts, my sister works here. <laughs> um, I had a grandfather that worked here. Um, yeah, we go back, way back, since 1833, so. <laughs> Once assembled, the guitar goes into this machine called a plec, which simulates the tension of the strings and makes computerized adjustments to the frets to ensure the guitar is perfectly intonated and playable. But the final and most crucial step is to string up the guitar and play it. Only a human being like Matt Hotchkiss is suitable for this task. This is my first job in the factory, yes. I. Um... I was lucky, I've been a musician for about uh, eight, nine years now. Um, I went to school for music, uh, came out, and then I started working here and just inspecting guitars has been a dream, so it's been great. My grandfather had an old 76 D35 that I've, j I've been playing since I was very young, um, and it was important to me to work here when I graduated college, just so it lived on through my family and through me. 
Matthew will make sure everything looks perfect before stringing the guitar, tuning it, and gluing on the pick guard. It does take a steady hand to make sure you get it right, um, but we do use a little bit of a marking to make sure. We also look for um, any, any type of defects within the guitar, like any dents or anything that has happened throughout the process. And last but not least, he will test it out. And place it in the case for the customer. Martin's guitars have evolved significantly over the 200 years of the company's existence. Just take a look and listen to this model from 1834, the oldest guitar in its collection. You can see it's very different from what we build now. There's a heavy violin influence. It has maple back and sides, that figure eight body shape. The company invented the iconic extra large dreadnought style guitar named after a World War I battleship. Martin saw a surge in demand for its guitars during the COVID-19 pandemic, with many people stuck at home looking for something to do. It's seen about 20 to 30% growth per year over the last two years. So COVID created a guitar boom. It, it wasn't a boom that was good for everyone in the music industry. It was good for you if you made something that you could play at home or home recording. It was not good if you'd made giant stadium PA system. But the popularity of acoustic guitars also means more trees being cut down. So Martin says it's made a big push towards sustainability. They're called rare exotic timbers for a reason, because they're becoming more rare and more exotic. So we not only have to be more judicious in how we use these traditional woods, we absolutely, positively have to look for alternatives. While Martin guitars may be expensive, price isn't the only consideration for dedicated guitarists. When you put the money into a guitar, you expect it to really respond. It becomes, it, it's almost like it's a part of you. It really, it's an extension of the artist. And why would you not want to have the best that you possibly can afford? And though high-end guitars tend to age like wines, increasing in value and quality over time, Chris says players shouldn't buy Martins as just a monetary investment. Having a Martin guitar that you can play is more fun than looking at your 401k account. And if at the end of the day your old Martin guitar was worth more than your 401k account, bonus. <laughs>